-hmm. Now, this week is Child Abuse Awareness Week. That is correct. And as a mother, this is a topic that is very important to me. Mm -hmm. I love my child Mm -hmm. more than anything else in this world. And it grieves my heart to see children suffering, Mm -hmm. suffering in any way or Mm -hmm. any form. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that your ministry is doing to prevent child okay. abuse. Issues such as child abuse are dealt with the arm of the ministry that is focused on social services and community development, specifically the, the child probation department. Okay. That is something that is led by the director, Miss Deborah Matthew, with the support of other sectors within the ministry, such as counseling and so forth. And what we have found is that child abuse is not new. It, is, it has been around from, I guess, from when God made the world, okay, where people use their children for strategic reasons, because their children are, I guess, for want of a better term, supposed to be the agent through which they live vicariously, especially for some of those parents who may be perceived as, in their own minds, as underachievers, where they tell themselves, well, I didn't get to accomplish X, so therefore my child has to be this. And it is for that reasons I find, well, I am not a parent, so I cannot um, claim to judge parents insofar as that debate is concerned. But based on the years that I have spent teaching in the public school system, we have had to interact with parents. I begin to see some of where, how, how they think and where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you find that children often become the subject of abuse because parents who lacked opportunities that they now see their children as vehicles for getting them to that point basically want to decide ahead of time that that child is supposed to be a doctor and this child is supposed to be a lawyer when actually you're really denying that child the creative direction that God gave him or her. Because I would, ap- I would am- assume that the better approach would be to find out what your child's talents are. Your child might not be academically gifted like Sally who is sitting next to him in school, but then maybe that's a different plan for Sally's life. But then your child might be the next Bill Gates, the next child that comes out with an app or maybe a cure for cancer that happens just by serendipity and by using everyday medication you know, or everyday plants and herbs that we don't think about. And I think we run the risk of abusing children when we figure these children are not living up to the expectations that you have for them. Well, what about what the child wants? You know, and that is why I think we need to get to a point in our school system where we begin to tell our educators and our parents, especially knowing a lot of them are young, inexperienced parents or accidental parents because they go to have sex and getting pregnant is not something they think about at the time. It happens. And in cases like that, you find that there are stronger correlations between that type of situation and the child abuse part of it. Because now you realize that this child is not a doll. You gotta look after this child. And this child means no more social life on the strip. It means sacrificing for yourself where you thought you would get your hair, your nails, and your and your makeup done every weekend, you know, can't have that. Especially if you choose to get pregnant for a renegade father who is not around because he's busy going out with other women. So now this child becomes your burden or your albatross and you lash out at this child and the child didn't ask to be here. None of us asked to be here. And these are where we find some of the problems. So the point I started making is that perhaps we need to, from the time children enter this preschool system, we need to begin mapping to see where their skills are and begin to have early conversations with them in terms of how they think and how they see themselves, find out which things they're good at. And as you process through the um, education system, you find ways that you can channel those talents as, as raw as they are so that you could figure out where their gifting is and that you could help them make better decisions when it comes to choosing subjects in schools. And at the same time, figuring which children are more geared towards technical and vocational education, which children are more artistically inclined, and which children, you can say, need to be the ones in the labs looking down the test tube and in the Petri dishes to come up with cures for cancer, to come up with all kinds of new innovations in terms of finding ways to confront the challenges that human beings have. And I think that would improve us a lot better. Mm -hmm. What our ministry has chosen to do, there's a project that we have called MEND. And it it is really meant to to mold, to educate parents, Mm -hmm. um, basically to inspire them, 
and to give them some sort of direction in terms of their parenting. And with that program, well, there are about 25 families we have in it right now, so you monitor these families all the time. They have the benefit of counseling, they have the pen benefit of guidance, and you help them through that process. Some of them are also financially challenged, so the government has a voucher system for groceries that assists them in that regard. More than likely, some of those families would be assigned a probation officer to look at these children, especially those that are pubescent or pre-adolescent and so forth, because you know, at that time is when they start challenging the, the authority of adults. The hormones are raging, they wa they're watching what's going on in the international media and they're following peer pressure. So we have that pro um, program in place, but there is also other pro there are also other programs that we run to try to keep an eye on what is going on and a lot of it comes from partnership with the schools too because we expect the teachers to be attuned to looking for the signs of behavior change in children. Do, did, do you have a child in school for example who is like in grade four and that child was doing well in class and then all of a sudden the child comes to school one morning and has crawled into a shell. If you speak to the child here she jumps out of the chair. If they're around certain persons of a particular gender they freeze. These are the signs that you look for because the, the problem is that the, the, the data internationally is showing us that most instances of child abuse take place by, by perpetrators who are well known to the family and very often they threaten children and say don't you dare say anything otherwise I kill you or kill your mother, kill your family and in some cases regrettably the mothers very well know that their children are being abused, but some of them end up prostituting their own kids because they find themselves in a situation of economic dependence. And they tell themselves that this man has moved on from me, who is old hat now, and has started in on my teenage daughter, but I can't say anything because if he leaves, we can't eat. So basically, what have you sold out your child's purity and virginity for? Money? forgetting that you leave that child scarred with an arrested development and then they themselves basically fumble through their other adolescent years and then repeats itself in terms of cycle that they too now realize they have no options or so they think and they end up getting pregnant for somebody because they're looking for love in the wrong places or they want to get out of the mother's house because they're tired of the situation and then we also confront those cases where reports have been made where the schools have done their work in terms of being vigilant for the signs of child abuse cases come up the special victims unit in the police force deals with it and before the trial could come up, somebody has paid off the mother. Mm -hmm. So how much is your child's purity worth? Okay, $30,000, $10,000. So you have the social services staff standing up outside the court waiting for their turn to go in, only to look like fools. Because some parent has cut their own deal with somebody else to keep a pedophile out of prison. So there are those situations. So basically we still have a lot of work to do in that, in that regard, but we wanted through the Awareness Week to shed light on the issue of child abuse because it happens in cycles. And what we also have seen from all of the international data that has been done is that persons who were themselves abused are often the ones who become the abuser because they do the same thing to other people's children, meet out violence, meet out fear, and you wreck lives, you know, and we have had cases here in St. Kitts and Nevis that are so gross and so atrocious to the point where uh, several years ago one of our OBGYNs had to perform a hysterectomy on a two-year-old child. Because how do you as a grown man expect that you could get turned on so much by a two-year-old child that you mash up the insides of this child, and I don't mean to be so gross in terms of our listening and viewing audience, but I am the type of individual who likes to keep it real, because that is exactly what it is. So you have a little child who has had to have her uterus removed, and she's going to progress through puberty with an arrested puberty because she may have ovaries in place, everything might have been taken out for all we know, and she has development that would take her into adult um, adolescence that has been arrested and all of her other little female peers they have their body shaping up nicely and they have breasts and so forth and then over time you have to raise your child with the knowledge that this has happened to you and your damaged goods I'm scared for life. of course you're scared for life and any intention that that young woman had of having children naturally has gone and the perpetrator has taken that away from her 
So we have cases like that, and as I said, it's gross, it's atrocious, but these are the things that we need to bring an end to. And uh, it, it goes the other way too. For example, even though this is not a case of child abuse, I don't know if you would have been following the news out of St. Lucia within the last five days, where Kenny Anthony himself as the Prime Minister had to go on national radio and TV and speak about a violent attack on a 97-year-old woman in, in, in St. Lucia. You know, now who in the right mind will do that? Because that woman could be your mother. She could be your grandmother. Don't you have sisters? Don't you have mothers? Would you want somebody to do that to them? And then to get an assault like that visited upon you in such violence will probably hasten your death because she's nearly 100. She'll never be the same again after that. You know, but then that tells me that more than likely the individual who did that to that 97-year-old woman may be somebody who has had a history of abusing people mm -hmm. and by extension abusing women and he might have started very early and had gotten away with it for a very, very long time. So these are some of the issues we want to shed light on. Now one of the things that we have done this year for Child Abuse Awareness Week is to schedule um, some lunch and dates with some of the children in the primary schools. So, for example, on Friday, several government officials, including ministers, would be taking two children per school to lunch with an adult, um, perhaps one of their teachers, so that you can begin to show some of these children, um, show them the fact that they have role models that they can look up to, and but most importantly, to let them know that they matter. Because very often we tend to feel tra traditionally as we've raised children that they should be seen and not heard. They shouldn't say anything. They don't have an opinion. Well, they do have an opinion. And perhaps sometimes if we listen to children more, the mistakes we make as adults, we wouldn't make them. Mm -hmm. Because they see things through eyes that are not clouded by a thing yet. And they see things as they are and they call things as they are. And it is not our job to shoot them down or to decide, well, you need to shut up because nobody asks you anything. And that whole approach to us taking them to lunch is to tell them that they're important and that they have a listening ear and that they have advocates in government who will be there to support them. So we are hoping that all of that continues throughout the rest of the week and even beyond so that, as I say, we really begin to show our nation's children that there are people out there advocating for them, even if your parent is not doing it.